Everybody has the desire to do something. But they don't have that, they, they don't know how to really complete the process of dedicating themselves and having the discipline to do it. If you got the desire, you got to match, match that desire with your dedication and you got to match it with your discipline. It may not happen at the moment that you want it to, but you got to understand the process. Everybody wants it yesterday. What happens is a lot of people set goals and they have this big goal and they look at it like this giant staircase and they're like, that just seems impossible. I can't, I, there's no way. It looks too hard. It looks too, too much work. And they don't, ever, they don't ever start. They set a goal. Yeah, I want to be at the top of that staircase. It's easy to write that down. But when they go to actually start climbing, they, they just go, ah, that's just that's too. True. But if all you did was just look at the first step and get on that first step. And then when you're on that step, just look at the next step. That's it. Don't look up. Just look at that next step. You got to understand that it's not going to be easy. People think that it's, that there's no challenges. Again, people want it yesterday. Most people want the convenience of transformation without the inconvenience. What we do is we kind of check out because it feels overwhelming or we check out because we're afraid or we check out because we start listening to self-doubt and then we make these teeny tiny decisions all day long we don't even realize it a decision to not get up on time a decision to not eat the right thing a decision to snap at your kids a decision to not speak in a meeting a decision to not look for a job like whatever it is all day long these tiny decisions that take you so far off track and then you wake up and, and you, you look at your life and you think, how the hell did I get here? The reason why a lot of people won't become who they want is because they're too attached to who they've been. And you hear it all the time when people say, I've always been this way. Okay, well if that's working for you, keep doing that. Every single person who has ever done anything worthwhile or exceptional or difficult or extraordinary anyone whether it's great artists or authors or mathematicians or whatever the f it is everyone encounters difficulties there is no easy road it does not exist it is impossible everyone has issues when you come up with excuses for why other people are successful and you're not that isn't dangerous. When you give yourself an escape, yeah, well that's easy for you to say, you know, you do this, you do this, you do this. Trust me, everybody has a hard road. You have to look at the bigger picture. Um, you have to have belief in yourself. And you have to have faith in yourself. And faith is not really just having or understanding that everything will be okay, but faith is, 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 is understanding that if things don't go your way, or if it doesn't turn out the way you want to, it's still going to be okay. We all go through hard times. We all go through depression. We all do go through doubt and, and then moments in your life where it's really difficult. That is what makes you a person. And those difficult moments are what build your character. Show me a great man who's the son of a great man. You know, that's what we're saying. These kids that are born billionaires, you're never going to be a self-made person. You have a backup trust for your backup trust for your trust. Feel the fear and do it anyway. If you don't push yourself, you don't find out where the boundaries of your current skill level are, and you don't fall, you don't get any better. No matter how talented, experienced, or privileged somebody else is, you can beat anybody at anything. You can accomplish any goal you set your sights on over time if you are just more consistent than everybody else around you you will win every race that you run somewhere deep inside you know what kind of person you were designed to be if you want to produce great acorns think like an oak not like an acorn. 
Think like the person you intend to become. Every seed has a tree in it. And the potential success of that tree is in that seed. And that's the way you are. Whatever you were born to do and be is in you now. And the success of your life depends on you becoming all that is trapped inside of you. What kind of seed is in you? I believe part of our responsibility in life is to find out who we are. You were not born just to make a living and keep a job and pay bills and then die. You were not born just to, to, to retire and get some pension and then fade away and we put you in a plot somewhere. You and I were born with the gift to make this a better place. Our circumstances and situations did not lend itself to us being successful. Many of us were not raised in an ideal circumstance that prepared us for where we really wanted to go. And even though we love the idea of being progressive or prospering or intelligent or spiritual, the reality is we were not aligned in the direction that we needed to be aligned to go to where we're trying to go. Ask yourself, how would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do? Success for the next year is going to be you making another step toward fulfilling your purpose in life while you were born. Making another step. Work to your potential, not your quota. If you want to stay really motivated, if you want to answer the question to why people that have already made it keep pushing, it is because they don't operate on quotas, they operate off potential. They're driven to reach their potential. This is also tied to their ethical obligation. They know what they're capable of. Nobody can tell you what you're capable of. You're the only one that knows. Work to your potential, not just to quota, and I promise you, you will be on fire day and night. I never expected to be anything but ordinary. I was raised to be nice and ordinary. I expected I would grow up to be, my dad worked for the phone company, I figured I'd go to work for the phone company, maybe work in an office. I figured I'd work till 65, I'd have 1.34 kids, I'd retire at 65, and then I'd die at the statistical average age for my, you know, my gene pool. That's what I expected. Until one day in 1972, on the radio in the next room to mine, I heard a voice that changed everything. I heard the voice of Earl Nightingale, known at the time as the Dean of Personal Motivation. He said, if you will spend one extra hour each day studying your chosen field, you'll be a national expert in that field in five years or less. That hit me like a tornado. It rearranged everything in my life. If you were to focus half an hour of study on one field of endeavor for five consecutive years, you'd not only transform you, you'd transform the world around you. And we collectively would transform the world as we know it today. Know how you're smart, not just how smart you are in comparison to others. In what ways are you smart? Know what you care about. What are the values that motivate your choices? Know what your personal velocity is, the intensity and drive with which you naturally operate. Know the background imprint, positive, neutral, or negative, that you carry with you and what effect it's had on you. Know your behavioral style, how you come across to other people. Know your, the patterns in your choices so that you're continually learning more and more about what it's like to be you so you can do an even better job of it. What are you going to do with the time you have left? I say that if you don't reposition yourself, you could miss the best time in your life. 
you are not reserving yourself for your highest and best use. We are not using our life, our time, our energy for our highest and best use. You're missing your life, your purpose, your passion, your excitement, your enthusiasm. Ask yourself every day, how would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do? If you want to be successful in life, do not seek success. Seek to become a person of value. Make yourself valuable and they'll pay for you. The mind of a champion, the relentless pursuit of always winning, always conquering, always thinking what to do next is instilled in all of us. If you don't have what you want, stop telling yourself the story because you don't have the money, you don't have the time, that's bullshit. It's because you haven't committed yourself where you would burn your boats. If you want to take the island, burn your boats and you will take the island because people, when they're going to either die or succeed, tend to succeed. But most of us give ourselves a way out and that's why we don't have what we want. So if you and I really want to know what's going to take to get your dream and make it real, it's to stop all the things you told yourself that aren't. And I'm here to tell you what I said at the top of our discussion. 80% of success is psychology and 20% is This is the secret. As long as you're working toward your inner goal, your dream, then success is possible. The most important element is for you to be able to do this, to be able to establish, most importantly, where you really are in your life today. Where are you? And where do you really want to go? What's going to create this extraordinary life? And to look at it brand new. Because some of you right now, if you continue the direction you're going, are going to be successful and unfulfilled, unhappy and stressed. You have to be self Discipline is necessary for everything you do in your life. If I want a better life tomorrow, I need to start working on it today. Ambition is a minute by minute, day by day mentality. To have the ambition to work towards a better family life, a newer car, a bigger house, a financially secure future, you have to live it every moment. If living a successful life was easy, I'm sure more people would be successful. If where you are is not what you saw, then what you are in is temporary. What's your dream? The dream is the most valuable, delicate gift you could ever have given to you. And there are people out there that'll try to steal it every single day of your life. We have the ability to live a lifestyle that fits our goals and dreams. You have the ability to put together any type of lifestyle you want in your mind and have it come true. It's an ability that you have, but you need to build that dream up and watch out for the Dream Stealers. Going for small accomplishments along the way for however long it takes. So let's think about this for a moment. What outside evidence or results or proof can be seen when you accomplish your goals one step at a time? You'll start to see things change around you. Little things, not major things, but little everyday things things you may not even notice unless you are paying attention. If you're one of those who'd rather stay up late and get up late only to discover that your workplace doesn't fit your schedule and you roll out of bed cursing the alarm clock every morning, maybe you could start with the little change of going to bed half an hour earlier than normal. And maybe you'll see, in time of course, you can't train your body overnight, 
Maybe you'll find out that you jump out of bed in a better mood and that your day will start better and that you'll get more done and that the people around you that caused you problems aren't so hard to work with after all. It all starts by making one little change and adding to it every day. If you're creative enough, can you find the answer, yes or no? If you're determined enough, can you find the breakthrough, yes or no? If you're passionate, loving enough, can you get someone to help you, yes or no? If there's no way that you're committed, can you find the money, even if you don't have it, yes or no? So I said creativity, decisiveness, passion, honesty, sincerity, love, these are the ultimate human resources. And when you engage these resources, you can get any other resource on earth. The key to kingdom success on earth is initiating and planning the change. Change will happen with or without you. Time will move with or without you. Success, therefore, is always in your hands because everybody has to deal with both time and change. Start changing how you look at mornings, and sure enough, people will start changing how they look at you. When you start changing how you think, how you act, how you treat others, how you treat yourself, when you start responding instead of reacting to life, life will start responding to you. I'm telling you that you can do it with your lifestyle. You can do it with your sales career. You can do it with your management career. You can do it with any part of your life. Your dream is only a dream until it has a plan. You can dream of the kind of life you want. You can dream of the kind of change you want. You can dream of the kind of future you want. But until you wake up and begin to plan to get there, it will only be a dream. When you get up tomorrow morning and are standing in front of the mirror getting ready for the day, remind yourself that you are somebody, that you are important and that you can make the changes that will move you closer to your ideal future. The only key to regulating and controlling change is planning. If you don't have a plan, you have no protection. A plan doesn't only tell you what you want to do. A plan tells you what you don't want to do. And so the key to success on your journey through this planet is to have a clear plan.